It is currently happening here in Lagos, the congregation of some of the most enterprising of Nigerian, African, and global heads in the filmmaking and the arts. The 12th edition of the I Represent International Documentary Film Festival. What is the importance of documentary films in Nigeria, and how can they contribute to elevating national discourse? Well, for a conversation, we are now being joined here by Femi Udumemi, filmmaker, photographer, tutor, and film festival director. Femi will also tell us why the Oscars continue to elude Nigeria and what can be done for Nollywood to be a major player in the global cinema landscape. He is the co-founder of High Rep International Documentary Film Festival, a former president of the Independent Television Producers Association of Nigeria, and for several years was head of jury for the African Magic Viewers Choice Awards, as well as a voting member of the Academy Awards, popularly known as the Oscars. Good morning, Mr. Dubemi. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Good to have morning. you in the studio. Huh? Good to have you. I can see that you've not had uh, sufficient sleep. You know, your eyes are heavy. <laughs> not, not, not. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks to I. But I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I, right. We've had a lot of fun. Uh, this is the last day. Today is the last day. And this is the 12th edition. The 12th edition. Um, the first hybrid edition. Oh, uh, I see. So we're just coming out of the pandemic now. Yeah. And it was very exciting to see how many people. Why documentaries? Tell us why. I mean, we know about film festivals. We know about, you know, well, not very big ones in Nigeria, I'm afraid. Will it be because um, we've not played our roles in Nigeria in terms of the level of festivals that people would like to see? Or is there something special that you think that Nigerians and the world can appreciate when you devote four days uh, to documentary film, films? I think we often underestimate the intelligence of the audience. Our audience are incredibly interested in thinking through issues, in getting familiar <laughs> with worlds that they may not you know, have all the information about. But the great thing about documentaries is that it's much more than uh, what used to be just propaganda. A documentary are very entertaining now. They're very cultural, but they're also very political. They're very, there's just so many varieties uh, uh, of genre within what we used to call a niche uh, 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 style of filmmaking. Uh, but what I think is most important for us is that documentary really has a way of um, maturing the filmmaker. And I think for our industry to grow to the level that we, we really have the potential, um, we have to make better filmmakers to make better films. We have to make filmmakers um, who entertain us. We need entertainment. I mean, we live in a very hard environment. So the laughter is important. The, the love stories are important. But it's also important to make films that make us reflect, films that make us think. We can't leave the theater all the time and totally forget that we've spent two hours of our lives, <laughs> um, you know, consuming uh, a, a, a work of art. Uh, so for me, it's really very critical to um, mature our filmmakers. So we've, we've paid a lot of attention as well to training, to workshops, um, and also to actually just having conversations about the themes of these films um, is, is in itself very important, to actually have um, discussions, debates, conversations, uh, I think is critical. Uh, film is a cultural practice. And as a cultural practice, it's all about representation. Not just representation of identity, but representations of points of view. And I think unless you're creating um, spaces for debate, um, it's very difficult for democracy to have any kind of authenticity. Because in the end, democracy is not just about voting. It's, it's actually about you know, um, points of views. It's about ideas. And I think that's what documentary does for us. But I think for us, it was just important to contribute this genre to the film industry that's called Nollywood. I mean, it's big. It's, yeah. it's, it's going somewhere. It's gone global. And it's, it's unlikely to have a really progressive film industry that does not have a documentary component mm -hmm. because it's, it's a very important way yeah. um, for us to navigate those issues that we might not be able to represent uh, fictionally. 
Yeah, I love your point. To mature the filmmaker, it's important to make documentaries. Now, you know, you are a voting member of the Academy, and you know that Nigeria achieved the feat in uh, 2020 with mm. Milkmaid, yes. but it didn't scale through the first category, mm. unfortunately. Unlike, uh, you know, last uh, time, uh, I believe it was Lionheart, they had an issue with, um, obviously, I guess it's the submission, the way that they had submitted it. But now, if we were to mature a filmmaker, would you say that making solely, like concentrating on documentaries should be the first step in making this movie? And why do you think that Milk Maid did not scale through that first category? Well, I'll answer, the last, I, I, I'll answer the last question yes. um, first. I think Milk Maid was, was magnificent for one singular reason. It was ambitious. Mm. It was one Nigerian film that was not trapped inside a three-bedroom flat. It, mm. it had landscapes that was, that was really, you know, larger than life. But it also um, put a human story in the context of an ongoing conflict that people across the world were perhaps not familiar with. You know, people talk about, you know, a banditry and all of this, but these are human beings. And what that film did was that it humanized you know, uh, a, a place of conflict. That said, it needed a lot more promotion than we gave it. It needed a lot of national, um, um, you know, uh, zeal. We needed to actually push it. We didn't. Uh, we left the filmmaker oh. playing in the wind. In fact, that film did not lose, in my opinion. Okay. Um, we simply neglected it. The filmmaker did a lot. And I have to say, Peace, uh, uh, Peace uh, Ayamo Sigwe of AMA did an amazing job as the leader of the industry to actually try to galvanize yeah. support for it. But the films that win at the Oscars have a huge investment in promoting <laughs> the film. It's a okay. national cause. Um, we have embassies across the world. Did Milkmaid show in any of our embassies? Oh. Did, any, did any of them push it um, in their markets? Oh. Because one of the first ways to, to create awareness is to put it in the newspapers and in the consciousness of different countries that have voting members. Yeah. Um, I think we failed the filmmaker, oh. but I hope it's a learning yeah. moment. And I hope that the next film we make that has an opportunity um, to be nominated, we will understand that we have to bring the force yeah. of our, our national aspiration behind it. Uh, once a film from Nigeria has been nominated, we can't compete with it. Mm. We can't talk it down. Yeah. These were the things that were happening. Mm. Filmmakers that did not get their films nominated talked down yeah. the one that was. And, and that's just something that's reflected uh, from the way we carry on our national debate, which is why, for me, documentary is so important. We can't do debate nationally like you do social media. Mm. You can't do knee-jerk responses. You can't just be contrarian to be contrarian. Mm. Uh, you've got to actually have a logical response. Mm. And where the Oscars are concerned, I do think we have an incredible opportunity for us, not just to win, but to be recognized yeah. as an artistic, filmic community. Yeah. And that's really where I think um, you know, the nuance is. We don't win just to win. Yeah. If it's just to win, uh, we don't have the studios, we don't have the publicity machines. So we need to understand that we will need much more than the average garden variety Hollywood um, film. Seems to be, there seems to be a dedicated process. It's more than just the film being good, actually. Yeah. There has to be a, a clear and well-articulated plan to get it the international notoriety that would allow it to succeed when it comes to international competitions like the Oscars. So I'm hoping that very soon Absolutely it will well be said. a Nigerian film that is able to win a, a, an Oscar because the talent is there. When we look at documentaries, though, um, and compare them to fictitious or non-fiction um, films, for example. In your opinion, is it easier to do one or the other? Because I'd imagine when it comes to a documentary, if you're using an empirical example, you are led by the story. You don't create the story first and then make the film. The film itself, the story itself dictates how long you spend and where you go. So when you look at that, 
path difference. Would you say it's easier to make a feature film than it is to make a documentary? Well, I never, I, if, you, if you've ever made a film, even if it's a short film, you know that the word easy doesn't come into the conversation. <laughs> a lot of the young filmmakers tend to like, you know, come into collision with reality when they actually make a film. It's very hard to make any kind of film. But I do think it requires different kinds of skill sets. Um, and, with a, with a, uh, and the margin of difference is simply control. You've said it, the idea that with a film, you know the beginning to the end because you've done a script. Yeah. You are the god in the context and everything is really according to how you've determined it. So your execution is really what makes the difference. But with a documentary, it starts from a question, not an answer. The documentary filmmaker doesn't really know in the end mm. what the answers will be or how yeah. it will turn out. Yeah. But it's, it's amazing because it's always a journey of discovery. And I think for both the filmmaker and the audience, uh, what makes documentary so fascinating for me and a passion for me really, is that you, you don't leave a documentary the same way mm. that you, you were before you saw it. Um, in the minimum, you're better, um, you're better informed. Um, and, and in the maximum, perhaps your idea, your world um, shifts. Uh, all right, let me ask this, uh, Efo. Um, you opened the festival with uh, Camilla Nelson's precedent, yes. you know, which was um, highly political, yes. focused on the uh, last presidential election uh, in Zimbabwe, you know, which, if you like, you know, has a lot of parallel with what we're experiencing in Nigeria. So I like the fact when you open your statement earlier uh, that filmmaking, especially documentaries, contribute to democracies, yeah. that democracy is not just about voting. So two things for me here. One is you opened an African documentary film festival with a film on um, an African country's issues with its democracy, but a film made by a non-African. And I want you to situate that, secondly, with uh, your opening speech at the festival about the need to decolonize stories about Africa. If you're trying to decolonize African stories, but then we have um, films from non-Africans telling, you know, telling, showing us our own reality. Uh, is there a conflict there? Was that deliberate? Or we just have to be open to the extent that every Every, every opinion matters. Is, is that what you were trying to do? I, I, I see no conflict, and, and we're very intentional. I, I think for you to be exceptional in pushing a point of view, you have to be intentional. And the intentionality there is simply that our focus is on storytelling about Africa that's unfiltered. Unfiltered means a balance. Everything the, the global narrative about Africa is, it's true. It's true that we have wars. It's true that we, we have poverty. It's true. But it is also true that we have innovators and that we have young people who are, who are marshalling, you know, their skills and talent to push a different narrative. The, the, the problem is about who's telling the story. And who's telling the story is not about nationality. Because a lot of Africans um, are responsible for the negativity of the stories of Africa. And let me tell you what I, I mean by that quickly. I, I fix, I used to be a fixer for international, um, um, you know, news organizations, BBC, Reuters, and all oh, of that. So you've been and, in the and, trenches and, with and, us. And, 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 and I, would, I would set up, you know, the stories, places to go. Yeah. But when the filmmaker comes mm. from either the BBC, the Reuters, or whatever, and you take him to where the story is, it tells you, ah, no, I'd really, I want something gritty, really gritty. <laughs> he wants to go to Makoko. He wants to go to Ikurudu. He wants a child with a big tummy and flies all over. Because what those you are saying resonates with that different name. Because those images. <laughs> we, we've been a few of those places. We've because seen those, those images are the images that his yes, editor yes. is waiting to, to get. To yeah. see. The yes. question is, can I, as an African, stand and say, no. Mm. Mm. And I've had to do that mm. many times. So really, it's never about the nationality. It's about the gatekeepers. Yeah. And I think the precedent was an important story because it's not Camilla's story. It is Shamisa's story. Mm. The, the protagonist of that story is Shamisa. 
the idea that we all talk about not too young to run and the bravery and the courage that it's going to require for a young pe person in Africa to confront the established order yes. is what Shamisa exemplified. Yeah. So for me, in putting that film up, we're also putting our eye on the fact that in 2023, we will vote. And we need our young people to get off of social media, mm -hmm. get voting cards, mm -hmm. <laughs> get involved, yeah. start running for things. You yeah. can't start to lead by being president. You can start from your local government. Mm -hmm. You can start from your state assembly. Yeah. Those are the kind of things that I hope the film um, inspires. Mm -hmm. Right. You're, I mean, today is the last day, right? What are we expecting? And I have a question. I, I also want you to answer this and tie it in with your last day. Why is it that Nollywood filmmakers shy away from documentaries? No, it's, 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 it's gruesome. It, well, the process can be gruesome. Yeah. And if you're in, a, in, a, in an industry where sometimes you're under pressure to turn yeah. around profit or yeah. to, to be relevant, to be out there, not to be left behind, mm -hmm. you can't really commit sometimes the time. Is it time funding or just Well, funding is a constant problem for everyone. It's not marketable. <laughs> but it? but the, to commit the time, yeah. and, and, and I'm trying to avoid saying the intellectual rigor as well, mm. because I think it does, um, making a documentary does require you to focus on research. Absolutely. You, you, can't, yeah. you can't just come yeah. there and yeah. say anything. Yeah. You've got to actually have your facts right. Yes. And, and the fact is the, the first person that confronts accountability is a documentary filmmaker. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to account for the what, where, how, and yeah. how you put it all together. Perspectives yeah. right. also uh, demand that of you. So for me, that's maybe the reason why, but we have more than enough. Yeah. In our first uh, um, documentary festival 12 years ago, there were less than 10 Nigerian uh, documentaries. This one, there was over 60. So it means there is some progress and yeah. there is some, you know. So this is um, part of the conversation for yes. your festival. So what are we expecting today? today? we have an exciting installation by Constance. Um, it's called Liwe. Um, it's, it's a story about, a, you know, a Nigerian space and a space in Germany that intersect and they're connected by the Civil War. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I find it an incredibly fascinating way of making film where you have two screens at the same time, yeah. two spaces, mm -hmm. and you get a chance to watch both. Oh. And, and the story crisscrosses right before you mm. um, um, in the time of the film. I find it really amazing. Again, it's a German filmmaker, mm -hmm. but a very progressive and innovative uh, idea that I would like Nigerian filmmakers to also uh, well, what, see what and, time is that and think up? about. Um, I, it starts, I think, at 11.30. We okay. start at 11.30 today. So um, our festival program is, is really quite intense and full today. So... I hope. But today, the major thing is that we have co the Chorus Stampede, and we will be um, talking with DJ Switch and, mm. and a few of the younger people who documented the NSAS. Mm. And, and we want to talk about how documentary and social... Um, Justice yeah. reform. How th those go. <laughs> and our final film today, the closing film, is really interesting by Momoni, um, you know, Night Nursery. Uh, it already is, a, is an award-winning uh, film from Fespaco. We're very excited because Momoni is Nigerian uh, and he, he went to Pefti. So right. it's very he important. Was, he was trained there. He was trained <laughs> here. He was matured here and he's gone out to Fespaco. Donna's proud. So we are showcasing. Yes. Uh, and he's young and, you know, no gray whatsoever. But I, I, <laughs> but I love that he loves documentary. Wonderful. All right. Mr. We want to thank, thank you. you so much for coming. And, and I like the fact that you honored a few people, you know, on the opening day, uh, Olu Jacobs, you know, and Fantastic, a few others, DJ yeah. Adesoya, you know, I would have asked you, but then maybe just as a, as a statement, uh, you made an important film with uh, Kadiri Ahmed, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I hope that, which was on uh, COVID-19, I yes. hope that as we approach 2023 with elections, maybe we'll have something like Camilla's film you know, from you too, or from you, you know, personally. You We're know, very excited. Thank right. you very much for having well me. Thank, Thank you so much. much.